What's up? What's good? What's problem? What's cracking? What's percolating? What's really good in the hood? And yeah, just got a call from my daughter. She said, Daddy, we won. I was in the midst of a podcast. I said, I'm going to have to get back with you. I said, I think I know what you're talking about. So here's what we have. Joe Biden has been declared the president. That's not what this post is about, though. That's not what this live is about. It's not. It's about the soul of America. We lost it. It's not even funny. We did. On the back of damn near every U.S. currency we have, the paper kind, the cotton kind, whatever, it says in God we trust. Now, there's supposed to be a clear-cut separation between church and state. It's a real reason for that. There's a, there's a, there's a good reason for that. Politics and religion don't always line up. I don't think I read anywhere in the Bible where Jesus was a politician. I ain't saying. I'm just saying. The reason why they don't line up is because if you look at Christianity, and I give Christianity a lot of flack. I do. The reason why I give Christianity a lot of flack, though, is not because of the religion. It's because of the people that practice it. Hypocritical. It's hard to walk in Jesus' shoes. This dude loved everybody. He led by example. He washed a whore's feet in the town square. That sound like something a politician would do? No, it doesn't. When I say our soul, we stop caring for our fellow man. We started being okay with certain things happening to our fellow man, our fellow woman. I'm going to be honest with you. That's not God's way. That's not Jesus' way. So if you say you follow that, then not caring about your fellow man puts you in direct conflict with the religion that you practice. It does. What's going on? Let me put my, what's going on, Anthony? What's going on, Kyle? So for the past four years, we have literally been turning on one another, picking fights with one another, pulling up, disrespecting one another, assaulting one another's children, pulling guns out and shooting each other's loved ones. And it's been inflamed by a dude that could care damn less. And you roll with it for political reasons. But this is supposed to be a Christian country. I didn't say it. Y'all keep claiming it. Sunday's the most segregated day of the week. Pastors who should be preaching love were preaching politics. How? How are you in your church preaching politics when we know damn good and well that ain't what that is? You have people who call themselves to be friends. When your family members were sick with COVID, they gave you the political answer. They gave you the political response. They gave you the political concern. They didn't give you the God concern. They didn't give you the Jesus caring. Oh, only one in 99%, only one in 100% die. So, you know, they should be fine. That's not a Jesus answer. That's not a Christian answer. That's not a godly answer. That's a political answer. That's a political concern. Sometimes I just like to grab them by the cookie is what he said. And too many Christians signed off on that. That should have told you exactly what you needed to then. The soul of our country was at stake. And because you agree with his politics, even though his politics didn't line up with the religious faith of Christianity, you still voted for him. Not once, but twice. And you have the audacity to look at people up. Uh, What's going on, Kelvin? What's going on, my brother? 
So the soul of our very country was at risk and y'all didn't care. And I was looking at you. You would smile in people's faces. You would try and defend your reasoning, but you call yourself a God-fearing, Christian, loving person. You say you care for your fellow man. How you finna care for some? How you finna say you care for your fellow man when you are literally lining up with a dude who refers to people as sons of bitches? But you got mad when Michelle was walking around without sleeves on her damn dress. But you call yourself Christians. Pissed me the hell off because I literally watched the soul of our country deteriorate before my very damn eyes eyes and y'all were cool with it because of the fact that you like this asshole that was in office everything that he said that had somebody said to you that would have had you put hands on people wanting to cuss people out y'all was cool with it because he said it That's not an American mentality. That's a cult mentality. When a dude stood in front of a church, a photo op, and y'all knew damn good and well, that's all it was was a photo op, you still voted for him. Here's the sad part. This is what's really, really got me where I'm at this morning. Damn, they half the country voted for this asshole. That tell me every damn thing I need to know. That tells me because what y'all were focused on was power. The whole damn world laughed at us while this ass was in office. The whole damn world. People that were normally our allies turned their backs on us for this one ass. That means if we went to war today or tomorrow, we would have had no allies and y'all don't get that. It would have just been us and y'all don't get that. It would have just been us, the Americans, because of his ego. It would have just been us. A three to four time draft dodger leading us into a fucking suicide mission because he don't give a damn about nobody but himself. A three to four time draft dodger that you said was more American than John McCain, who's Republican, whose political policies I disagree with, but he's a veteran. We sacrifice the soul of this very damn country for political reasons. Political reasons based on an egotistical, maniacal maniac. When I talked to y'all, y'all said y'all wanted somebody who was about power. Heavy is the head that, bear, that wears the damn crown. Power without morals is corrupt. And he has no damn morals whatsoever. What does that say about you and you voted for him? This is the same dude who said he could walk in the middle of the street and kill somebody and his constituents not say anything. Hell, Trayvon Martin didn't get that benefit of the doubt. George Floyd didn't get that benefit of the doubt. Mike Brown didn't get that benefit of the doubt. Breonna Taylor didn't get that benefit of the doubt. But y'all gave this asshole that benefit of the doubt? Half of you voted for him. But you would look at me and tell me to act like I got some damn sense. There's no way in hell... I or any person of color could conduct themselves like Donald J. Trump and you tell me I was good. You wouldn't look the other way. You would look at me like I was immoral. You would look at me like I'm beneath you. And this dude said there were peop good people on both sides. A woman was ran over. This tells me everything I need to know about y'all because the woman that was ran over she wasn't black. A white man, a white racist. Let me say that. I'm going to draw a line between the two. A white racist ran over a white American female with a car and y'all were cool with it. He was cool with it. He couldn't even denounce racism. At a presidential debate, he stood up there and said, I'm the least racist person in the room that's not the correct answer the correct answer is i'm not racist and i don't even appreciate you putting that on me i should beat your ass for even insinuating something like that he said he was the least racist person in the room and you still voted for him 
I've been telling you for four years this dude was a damn racist and you still voted for him. You still voted for him. That tell me everything I need to know. And then he doubled down on it by telling his boys to stand by and stand ready. And you still voted for him. Y'all talk about this country was going to go to hell if Biden got elected. Y'all were literally looking past this foolishness every damn day. And you call yourself Christians. No. Here's where I'm at. Because to get this country back right, we got to start calling BS when we see it. Don't look for me and mine just to call ourselves out. Because, see, I got deadbeat dads on lock every damn day. I got the brothers and sisters that want to go out here and misrepresent us every damn day. But I need Christians to stand tall because I read the damn Bible. This dude is nothing. I need Christians to stand tall and hold Christians accountable. I need Americans to stand tall and hold Americans accountable. Because if this is supposed to be one country for every American, then that divisive rhetoric has got to goddamn go. And I'm sorry, but no, I'm not sorry. That's the most divisive damn person we've had in the White House since I've been alive. And the fact that I'm older than some of y'all and some of y'all voted for it tells me a lot. You don't love your fellow man. You love you. Everybody that voted for that asshole, you identify with him. That means to a degree, your morals ain't no different than his. That means at the end of the day, you care more about power than about morality. But you want me to be moral? You want me to give a damn about this country? Give a damn about my fellow man regardless of his religion? You want me to give a damn about my fellow man regardless of his gender, regardless of his politics, regardless of his ethnicity, regardless of his sexual preference. But when it comes to me, you have the audacity to be judgmental. How dare you? You got caught slipping. You got outflanked. This dude pushed for a confrontation at the polls. We had already voted. You too stupid to understand how you got outsmarted because Biden said, don't even do it. Then the dumbass says, count the vote, don't count the vote, but you still going to ride with him because you feel like the country is in turmoil. You're right. You brought it upon us when you elected him. You were willing to double down on it because you voted for him again. To my brothers and sisters that ride with me that believe in a truly united America where we can all get up and go to work and not worry about foolishness, where we can send our children off and not worry about them being harassed by law enforcement, where we can elect politicians that truly do care about each and every American, where we can sit around today and say, you know what, let's go ahead and start working on that third party so we have a legitimate third party candidate in four years. These are the Americans that I'm going to ride with. These are the Americans that I'm going to trust. I don't give a damn what our relationship was prior to the election. If I know damn good and well you voted for that asshole, not once, but twice, there is no relationship because you cannot be trusted. When it comes down to it, when it comes down to doing what's right, you can't be trusted to do what's right. You not. You're going to do what benefits you, whether it's right or wrong. And I can't F with you. And I'm encouraged mine to not mess with you either. I ain't saying. I'm just saying college football Saturday. It's really not that hard to get along with your fellow man. It's not. It's really not that hard to get along with your fellow American if y'all putting America first. When you start putting this other stuff in there, the South will rise again. I don't like what this person does during their free time. I don't like the way this person looks. You're going to have them issues. We all different. But we all American. And if I've said it once, I'll say it again. 
You don't think we all Americans? Forget election night. If we went to war today or tomorrow, our enemy is not going to ask who you voted for. It's not going to give two shits. It's not going to ask what your religion is. Not going to care. Not going to ask what your gender is, what your gender preference is. Not, not going to ask none of that. Not going to ask how much money you make. Don't care about your hair texture, your eye color, or any of that. As far as our enemy is concerned, if you identify as an American, that's your ass, Mr. Postman. If we can't see that, we can't understand that. There's something wrong with us. I ain't saying. I'm just saying. Peace.